Welcome back to Faith in Action. Addiction and mental illness are among the primary factors leading to homelessness. That's why these health issues are a focus of HUM, the Helping Up Mission, one of Baltimore's oldest and largest nonprofit institutions dedicated to serving the poor and homeless. With us to talk about the challenges of addressing the physical health issues of the homeless are Mr. Robert Gaiman, Executive Director of HUM, and Dr. Mary Lashley, Professor of Nursing at Towson University and a volunteer nurse and nurse consultant at the Helping Up Ministry. Thank you both for joining us today. Thanks for having us. I understand that 85% of the men you serve at HUM are addicted to either drugs or alcohol. Tell us a little bit about how that affects the way you treat and the way that they receive treatment. Helping Up Mission's mission is to bring hope to the poor and homeless of Baltimore. Mm -hmm. So as we've been uh, treating and helping the poor throughout the years, uh, we came to realize that most of the homeless people that come to us for help have a drug and alcohol addiction and many of them also have mental illness as well. Mm. So we realized that if we're going to help them move forward and actually manage their lives and, and improve, then we're going to have to come up with a really good spiritual recovery program that's residential in nature so that they can get the help that they need. So we went to work to decide, okay, uh, what are the obstacles uh, in a drug addict's life that keep him from getting help? And what are the kind of things we can bring into a person's life that will help them overcome the obstacles and give them all the support that they need in order to move forward? Mm -hmm. So as a result, we provided we provide a long-term residential, uh, faith-based or uh, program mm -hmm. uh, that provides all the services under one roof that an addict would need in order to get well. And what we try to do is uh, find the things in their lives that have block them from moving forward, remove them, and find out what kind of treatment can be given that will encourage and motivate and help them move forward. And so uh, during the years, we've been able to come up with a long-term program that really has worked. And we've, by experience, know that a long-term addict, if he gets the right kind of long-term help, can get well and manage their lives. And so there are a lot of miracles out there today because we've we focused on helping them move forward uh, in their lives by treating mental illness and, and drug addiction. When we talk about uh, drug addiction and mental illness, Dr. Lashley, uh, do you see these as being uh, ish reasons that or causes or effects of their homelessness, talking about your clients? Well, the relationship between addiction and homelessness is complex and controversial. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are many people that are addicted to drugs and alcohol who never become homeless. Mm -hmm. But if someone is poor and addicted, they're certainly at increased risk. And we know that without a stable place to live, the chances of recovery uh, are very poor. Um, persons may uh, take chemical substances to cope with the hopelessness and the isolation that is part of the experience of homelessness. On the other hand, uh, the behaviors and consequences associated with active addiction can propel someone into a homeless condition. And for our men, certainly addiction has been a major cause of homelessness. So now at HUM, you service men, all men. It's a uh, male facility. Uh, what type of, Dr. Lashley, what type of current issues uh, are threats, health issues, are a major threat to the population which you serve? Well, there are a number of serious health issues that affect our population. Certainly mental health issues and addictions is primary, but also exacerbation of chronic illnesses. Many people have chronic diseases that have gone untreated for a period of time, so they're out of control, like diabetes and hypertension. We see respiratory conditions, skin and wound infections, uh, foot problems. Uh, communicable diseases and oral health care is a huge issue because access to medical care in general is far better than access to dental care. Mm -hmm. We've been very fortunate to be able to partner with a number of wonderful nonprofit organizations and other agencies and academic centers to provide a comprehensive range in health, of health and social services to our residents. When we talk about you said partnerships with other medical institutions, uh, Bob, what type of partnerships have you developed in the faith community? Uh, I'm sure a lot of the uh, uh, local faith institutions 
uh, uh, you may have approached or what have you in the past. Tell us a little bit about those partnerships. Well, the churches in the community mm -hmm. are, are the primary institutions of faith mm -hmm. that are there for us. Okay. Uh, let me give you a number of illustrations. First, each of our men can have a mentor from the faith community. So we have a lot of, of, of men in the churches, all kinds of churches throughout the Baltimore metro area who provide mentors for the men who are in the program. That simply means that a volunteer will come down, meet with a man mm -hmm. for an hour a week, go out to lunch, dinner, coffee, and just talk about life. And, and they provide that mentorship. And so long-term relationships are established. Many of our volunteer spots are filled by people who are in churches. Mm -hmm. And so th there, there are so many resources that we find in churches that can be filled. Another one, a very valuable resource, is that we find personal tutors uh, to provide for each of the men who do not have their uh, high school diploma. We help men get their GED. And it's taken us a little while to be successful with this effort, but we are very successful now because we provide a personal tutor for each person. So those are just a couple of areas where volunteers from the faith community uh, are making a huge difference. And we provide, as a mission, a place for churches who want to help the poor and homeless, and they do. Mm -hmm. uh, and we provide a, a place where that can happen. Mm -hmm. uh, most churches cannot put in the resources and the energy into that mm -hmm. particular aspect of helping. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we focus full time on doing that, and then the churches can connect with us and really make some good things happen. When we talk about <clears throat> excuse me, when you talk about your program, uh, what is the capacity? I mean, on an annual basis, how many would you say you actually service on an annual basis? We, we own the whole 1,000 block of East Baltimore Street. Mm -hmm. So it's a little campus. Mm -hmm. and if you go there today, you'll see 400 men. They have an average of 20 years of drug addiction. Mm -hmm. They started using when they were 16 years of age. Mm -hmm. Uh, they now are approximately 40 years of age. They've had an average of 30 months of incarceration time. They've reached the bottom, and they're ready for help. Mm -hmm. And so on any given year, we'll have anywhere between four and 600 men who will enroll and spend a great deal of time in our program. We encourage each person to go a full year and then graduate because we know if they go 12 months and they graduate from the program, that two years out, 80% of them are still drug-free and employed. If they stay a lesser amount of time, it, it, the, the chances aren't as good. But Well, tell me, uh, the Helping Up Mission is one of the most successful uh, re recovery programs in the city of Baltimore. Uh, either one of you can answer this question. What, to what do you attribute that success? I think we both agree, Mary, that the, the, if you ask that question, if we ask that question, and we do it to the men in the program, mm -hmm. it, instantly they will say it's the spiritual component. Uh, that many of them had been in other programs, mm -hmm. but a lot of the men who come to our program want to have the spiritual recovery going alongside their drug treatment. Mm -hmm. Because they've they've had they've been physically treated in the past, uh, they worked on the physical addiction, but there's an emptiness inside that must be filled, mm -hmm. body, soul, and spirit, and the spiritual needs, the deepest needs of mankind, mm -hmm. need to be filled, and so they've they've had an emptiness, and so now they're at a place where they can reach out to God, mm -hmm. connect with Him, and of course we're a Christian faith-based organization, so that okay. means for us that we come to know Jesus Christ, and that He's alive within, and when when you're connected with God, it opens up a whole new realm of possibility. Well, thank you. Thank Bob, thank you for joining us. Mary, thank you for joining us. And when we come back, one congregation reaches out to those with HIV and AIDS. Please don't go away.